what you like. Yeah, hi. I'd like to order a Pixel 8 Pro, please. And then? Uh, can you make it porcelain in color? And then? Can you make it flat screen, no curved edges? And then? Um, yeah, what do you want? Oh, yeah. And a uh, Tensor G3 chip with 12 gigs of RAM. Huh, and then? While you're at it, can I get seven years of security and feature updates? And you might as well throw in uh, Pixel Watch 2 for the same price. And then? Finally, can I get the best camera, the best software mixed with uh, some of the best AI? And, oh yes, yeah, some wonton soup. Huh, and then? That's it, that's all I want. No and then. And then? Okay, okay, that's enough of that. The Pixel 8 Pro is finally here and I'm sure you're sick of seeing the same thing said over and over from the other reviews. So instead of this video, I'm just going to focus on my favorite things about the new phone. And you also hear from someone who has paid for this phone out of their own pocket. For a while, I was on team Samsung since they tend to always push the limits with the best hardware, crazy cameras and they do live up to the ultra name. However, there's just little things that software can beat out even with the best hardware. For example, whenever I find myself with Samsung's One UI, it always comes preloaded with some bloatware that I don't need and what I end up doing is just uninstalling those apps. And no matter how good Samsung's gallery messaging and phone apps are, I end up installing Google's phone messaging and photos app, which leaves my phone with double the apps, double messaging apps, double gallery and photos app, and double phone apps, which gives you a feeling of, I don't know, unsatisfaction. Almost like when you're wearing a wig. Yes, you have hair, but it just doesn't feel right. No offense if you use a wig, just an example. With the Pixel phones, you get all those apps natively installed. Google Messages does great protecting you against spam, and the phone app does the same, plus it gives you screen calling features with a new AI voice assistant that sounds like a real person. Hi, I'm an automated calling assistant recording this call for the person you're trying to reach. Can I ask what you're calling about? Yeah, can you buy me gift cards? Please remove this number from your mailing and contact us. Thanks and goodbye. This feature is only available to Pixel phones and it's worth getting a Pixel for this feature alone. Because many times I don't know who's calling and my assistant makes sure to keep them on track. Just a few days ago, I had an automated robocall talk to my automated assistant and they both took care of things without having to involve me. Isn't that great? So what's new with this Pixel 8 Pro? Google has a new Tensor G3 chip with nine cores maxing out at three gigahertz. It's specially designed to handle new AI features such as a better performance from Magic Erase, a new feature called Best Take, which lets you swap people's best faces on pictures call screening, generating new AI wallpapers, and even summarizing web pages into a short paragraph. Just look at how I generate a new wallpaper by going to wallpaper settings, more wallpapers, AI wallpaper, select your theme, and I'm gonna generate a surreal building made of silk and shades of coral and tan, and it creates a unique image customized just for you. And when I'm using the phone, I don't notice any lag and I have not noticed any heating issues. Samsung and Apple definitely have better chips, but I'm liking the approach of Google optimizing everything with hardware and software working together in harmony to give us a smooth experience. Another good example of how Google gets the little software things done right is when I tell my phone to turn on my Philips Hue lights. It doesn't just turn them on, it also shows me each light so I can adjust each light if needed. 
This comes in handy because there's always just one light that's just too bright. The battery is also slightly bigger coming in at 5,050 milliamps when compared to the Pixel 7 Pro's 5,000 milliamps. With the Pixel 7 Pro, my battery would need a boost throughout the day to have me survive the whole day. With an extreme full day of use on the Pixel 8 Pro, I was able to get going from 5 a.m. until 11 p.m. with about 30% battery left in the tank. This included me using heavy use of social media apps, driving to work, and the normal everyday use. So far, it seems better optimized than the Pixel 7 Pro, but it could be that the Pixel 8 Pro is new and it has a brand new battery, so only time will tell. There's a new 6.7 inch OLED Super Actual display that goes from 1 to 120 hertz. It dynamically adjusts for performance and battery life, and it could go up to 1600 nits HDR and 2400 nits peak brightness. The Pixel 8 Pro also gets rid of the curvy edges on the screen and is now a complete flat screen, which is a nice welcome. If you put it next to the Pixel 7 Pro, they almost look identical since they have the same screen size. But once you touch them and use it, you can actually feel the flat screen versus the curved edges. The main camera comes with a 50 megapixel, 25 millimeter f1.68 aperture. A 48 megapixel ultra wide with f1.95 aperture and a 48 megapixel tele with f2.8. When compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, the A Pro brings an upgrade with a better sensor, bigger size, and better apertures, which is going to get you better low light performance and better portrait shots for a nice blurry background. For video, because of the previously mentioned upgrades, you're going to get better results when shooting in 4K. The stabilization is amazing and it resembles footage of gimbal work when compared to the pro cameras. You can be confident that when you pull out your phone, you're going to capture amazing looking footage, which is not going to disappoint. As mentioned earlier, I love how Google gets the small things done right. And with this optimized G3 Tensor chip, you can expect less spam calls, and I just love the new natural sounding assistant voice when using the screen calling. And it's even gonna to suggest to fix your paragraph when you're texting somebody. The biggest improvements for AI will be the post-processing power with fixing pictures you take to remove unwanted objects. And as soon as you take a picture, you can see how it processes the image and it immediately enhances it to look the best. Of course, not everything is perfect, and let's mention some of the cons I've noticed with the phone so far. At the very top of the phone where the screen ends, for some reason there's a small section where dust particles can go in, and it's definitely noticeable if you're picky. The camera bump on the back is definitely not small, and while it looks nice, there's just no way around that big camo of a back. But it doesn't really affect me since I always use a case on my phone, and it makes the phone completely flat. The temperature sensor is kind of useless in my opinion since it just sounds cool to have, but I'm not sure how useful it is since it's not even 100% accurate when I was testing this. The fingerprint reader needs to have always on display to work best, otherwise you're gonna have to power on the screen first. Instead of the temperature sensor, maybe they should match Apple and Samsung's fingerprint readers. Overall, I'm very happy with my Pixel 8 Pro and because everything feels just right with no lag from the phone and all the software working in perfect harmony, I just don't see myself switching back to Samsung or even worse, going to Apple. I love the approach to how Google is aiming to make yearly adjustments into the right direction and not just completely doing a new phone each year. The cool thing when they focus on software is that we can expect even better performance as they release more updates throughout the year. Do you have this phone yet or are you planning on getting it? Let me know down in the comments and I'll make sure to personally respond to you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like so it can spread to other people and also subscribe to our channel not to miss any of our new tech content. I'm trying to reach 2000 subscribers and it would mean a lot. Until next time, Ultratech out.